Welcome back. Now it's time to settle back and discover how a simple splash of colour and a few well-chosen brush strokes can create stunning results, as we join Hazel Sohn for two easy-to-follow projects from a wonderful world of watercolour. Tea breaks are often 15 minutes. 10 minutes to make a painting, 5 minutes to have your tea. This lovely cup and saucer has interior form that we're going to catch in that same way I've just shown you. But we need a pencil guide just to hasten the painting. So it's catching the ellipse, catching the shape. And it's just worth looking at the shapes between things as well as the shapes themselves. So the shape inside the handle to feel your ellipse. And nice little piece of biscuit, nice cookie there and the shadow coming away and we can just see the tea inside and there's a little bit of steam coming but that's cooling down as we watch it. Yellow ochre again as my base, effectively my wetting agent for running the other colours into. The tea is catching a nice little highlight, the rim of the cup is catching a highlight. Quite a nice uh, obvious rim, it's quite a nice um, fat piece of crockery. The shadows on this side so bring the colour around and take the colour off the brush to soften as it comes into the light area. The uh, cup is casting the shadow across there and we're catching a little bit of light in the saucer and our little cookies, very yellow ochre, aren't they? So this first wash is covering every colour that isn't white light, that isn't lit, and it's acting as something wet to put a stronger wash in. So almost the whole cookie can be actually covered in the yellow ochre. And they're also casting a shadow. And then there's also the shadow underneath, cast by the saucer, quite a broad shadow. And the colour of the table, which is bringing out and the lit side of the handle, because we can only create light by using something darker than the white paper for us to be able to see it. Uh, so we're coming down the dark side and just spread this colour into here. We can actually see the inside of the cup is slightly quite yellow actually, isn't it? And now we'll just re-wet with slightly stronger colour down this side to keep ourselves something nice and wet to work into. And likewise on the, on the shady side. Well, I'm going to use cobalt blue because it's that colour of this off-white china with a little bit of the yellow ochre into it. Mix up a nice mix to just grey down the shadowy area. And it runs into the wet wash, giving us the turn of the form. Come down the back side, see how it's creating the three dimensional shape. light under there. Not too dark. And the shadow cast by the cast by the little cookies. And then we need the colour of the tea itself, which is burnt sienna, and we'll take a another brush. You'll find that often there's more time spent mixing in the palette than there ever is painting on the paper. So you need to have your colours ready. You see, it's taking me a bit of time to work up this burnt sienna because I didn't squeeze a tube out in there to speed up my time. So a lot of painting quickly is about being ready, about being ready to apply that colour. Let's darken up the tea on the dark side. And then we need blue to bring in the shadow under here, 
shadow around here, shadow under here, shadow on the table, another layer of burnt of uh, yellow ochre on the cookie. Mustn't forget the spots, must we? We've got to get the spots in last. And obviously because the paint is wet, the spots are going to have to be quite dry colour, aren't they? And here we're using wet beside wet because we don't want it to run into the background. A bit more burnt sienna here and now we need So we need to bring in our spots and we'll use the burnt sienna, which I needed to squeeze out of my tube. Right, while it's the darkest, we'll go in on the darkest spot here. And round this side here. They're not huge spots actually, they are lovely, aren't they? And then we'll pick up the lighter colour there. Because even when you're putting a colour on top, it's still got to work with the tone. There's another dark one down there. Another dark one here. Another dark one here. And then it's lighter on this side here. That helps pick up against the... Helps pick up against the... Um, background there and we've still got another little one down here and where else have we got any of these spots we just need to bring out the saucer against the cup here very pale wet against wet and the background against there and we need a bit more shadow under here so we can feel the shape of the saucer underneath And just a bit more intense tea in this darkest corner. So we bring that into here. And I think probably our time is up for our 10 minute watercolour. I would strengthen the tone under here to make it sit on the table. And now it's probably time to eat my biscuit. Flowers lend themselves to be painted quickly because you don't have to paint them in detail for them to look vibrant. I'm going to paint these glorious yellow daffodils by using aureolin as my undercolour, my wetting agent. So I'm making the shapes, but they can be fairly loose because being flowers, they're very organic. So you're not restricted in your drawing in the same way as you are with a more regular shape. So I'm looking at all the flower, all, all the shapes together and painting them as one big fell swoop of yellowness. You don't really need a pencil drawing under these because they can be fairly loose and fairly inaccurate really and still have a lovely sense of spring about them. Keep the colour quite strong, not too weak. I'm just going to identify wet beside wet to help me there to see where that petal comes to. And these are the, on this side, are the ones facing the light. And even I'm just going to get my, see where the rim of the pot comes to and the rim of the water, just to give myself a demarcation line so I know where I'm going into. Now I'm going to bring in a stronger, brighter yellow, Indian yellow. This daffodil here is a slightly different colour, it's much more the colour of the aureolin. I haven't gone back into the pot because now I want to bring the strength of this lovely, vibrant colour 
So I just need pure pigment going into the already wet paper. All the wet is on the paper already. Don't need to add any more water. Oh, these are beautiful shapes. These two colours are actually perfect, aren't they, for the two different colours of the daffodils. You don't have to be too precise. And then this one in the middle here, which is much more aureolin in colour. And that one, actually, we can start to use then neat aureolin to bring out the striations, the, the folds in the petals themselves. I don't have to say too much, just because actually the creases are very pale, but just helps us identify one petal from the other. But we don't have to paint everything. I'm going to use a cerulean blue for the interior of this that daffodil there. And then we can just see behind this leaf here the green of that stem. Take the colour off my brush. Use the cerulean blue uh, to create the back. And we can see that point of the brush, the beautiful sable brush, can create the shape of the leaf in one fell swoop. And we use it to bring out the back where the stem comes over of the daffodil and underneath here. We just pick out the stems and then we leave a rim for the water. In fact, a really a block of stems there. And then under, under the water, this is still the undercolour of the greens. The cerulean is the pale, pale greeny colour. We're just hinting at these stems. We don't want to get into too much detail. We want to keep it looking organic. And then a little bit of Prussian just to bring out the shadows of the darker stems. And then we need a little bit of violet, a little bit of violet to bring down the sides. We can see that this pot is lit from this side just bring out the underside of these petals on here. Just keep it so they're light against dark. And we can use that same colour for the little papery stems that come out of the back of the daffodil. And then we use that same violet down the side of the pot here just so we can see that it's three-dimensional, because even though it's a transparent pot, it's still got form. And we can just bring out the stems as they're coming across here, and we can strengthen anything just dark into the wet wash to enable us to see light against dark. Let's take a line down the side of that pot there. And I think we could have another, although we haven't got one, I'm going to give another leaf. Oop, too dark just behind here to bring out this petal here so we can see that. Because you're working wet in wet, you may often find that colours run in where you don't want them. So, for example here, we want to keep this, we want to keep this little petal um, green, so we just bring back a little bit of that original aureolin. So there we are. It's nearly time for a quick break, but before we go, let's join Jeremy Ford as he unravels the secrets of using fixative to achieve perfect finish to your pastel painting. 
When you finish your pastel picture, it will be a little bit fragile to the touch. Some of the pastel can come off if you're not careful. And people often ask whether you should spray a picture afterwards with fixative. If you do, you need to be careful because if you get too close, you can alter the colours and make the picture look far too vivid. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to mask part of the sample that I've done here and just get too close to it and spray it too heavily. And now if I take this off, you can see the difference. Now that will dry a little bit lighter than that, but it is a better way of doing it. You just need to get a little bit further away. So if I cover this section and give it a very gentle spray, and uh, those little dot marks will uh, disappear in a, a few seconds. And then I do the same again in a couple of minutes once all that's dried, uh, but for, uh, very, very gently, just two or three coats, and uh, that will fix the pastel onto the paper without seriously altering the look of it. So let's just wait a couple of minutes for that to dry. The fixative's dried now, and we can see that the darker bit that I sprayed too close to is uh, quite vivid compared with the original in the middle. And where I sprayed it lightly, it is ever so slightly darker, but that's perfectly acceptable. Some people like to spray it with fixative, some don't. If you don't spray it with fixative, get it behind glass as soon as you can. Even though it's been sprayed lightly with fixative, you still need to be careful because it still will come off if you rub it. So just be careful when you handle it. If you can get it to the picture framers and get it behind glass, so much the better. Thanks, Jeremy, for sharing some of your handy techniques. Come back after the break when Fraser Scarf reveals some of the hidden stories behind his favourite works of art and Vic Bearcroft takes part in our regular My Favourites feature and reveals some of the many things that inspires him. We'll see you soon. Bye.